and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, before I dive in here, let me tell you about some resources that you might find helpful. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, a lot of the material from this presentation is drawn from um, two books that I've written, Software Requirements 3rd Edition, co-authored with Joy Beatty, which came out in 2013, and also a book from a few years before that called More About Software Requirements. Uh, both of these books have got extensive amounts of information about use cases and some of the uh, tricky areas that people seem to struggle with when it comes to use cases are described in the More About book, so you might find those helpful. Now, there's also a, quite a number of books dedicated to the topic of use cases that have been published over the last oh, 10 to 15 years. And a very wise man named Myler Page Jones once said that if you read one book on use cases, you're in good shape. But if you read more than one, you're in trouble. And his point was that there's just enough differences between how people approach things in the different use cases books. There's some differences in terminology uh, that lead to some confusion. And so, um, you know, there, you could read a lot of books, but then you're probably going to still be a little puzzled about exactly what to call the bits and pieces of a use case and exactly how you should think about them and apply them. So if you're just going to read one book and try to avoid getting too confused, here's the one I would recommend. I think this is the overall clearest written and um, most practical straightforward book on use cases called Use Cases, Requirements, and Context by Daryl Kulak and uh, Eamon Guiney. Um, now, I've been using use cases for a long time now. I got excited about them when I learned about them at some conferences that I attended in the early 1990s and was able to apply them successfully on projects. So I am not going to present Carl's wacky new approach to use cases. Instead, I'm going to describe a very mainstream kind of approach that's been, of course, shaped by my own experiences. But there's nothing really weird here and nothing that you'd find that I think uh, disagreed with the kinds of things that you'll read about in some of the other books on use cases. So let me tell you how we're going to spend our time during this presentation. First, of course, we'll start with some definitions so that when I say use case, you'll at least know what I think those are. And, you know, the terminology gets confusing. People sometimes talk about business use cases versus system use cases, and I'm not going to go there. I don't find that particularly helpful, and so I'm going to stick with uh, just a, kind of a generic use case approach here. I'm going to distinguish between use cases and user stories, which are widely used on agile software development projects. and. There's a, a lot of mystique around both of these terms, but really that's pretty straightforward and, and there's a lot of similarities between them too. I'm going to describe why I think the use case or user story approach is so valuable to helping us elicit requirements, the correct requirements, and, and take an efficient approach to requirements development. The terms you'll hear a lot when we're talking about use cases is the ideas of user classes and actors, and that's one of the points of confusion. People sometimes get puzzled about, well, what's the difference between a user and an actor? And actor is sort of a use case term that you'll hear a lot, so I'll try to clarify that issue. I'm going to describe to you exactly how I've approached um, employing the use case technique in uh, requirements solicitation on actual projects and describe how I've done this in the course of a workshop, an interactive workshop with a number of user representatives and others, because it really seemed to work very well for us when we took that approach. I'll show you the various bits and pieces of information that make up a, a fully structured use case. Then I'll talk a little bit about another point of confusion that I see just endless debates about in discussion groups in places like LinkedIn, uh, the relationships between use cases and other kinds of requirements, in particular functional requirements. So by the time we've gone through this presentation, you'll at least understand how I view these uh, different concepts fitting together. They're both important. They're not the same thing in my view, but there's certainly a close connection there. And I'll wrap up by warning you about some of the common use case traps that you want to watch out for that cause headaches for people. So let's start with some definitions. Um, if I showed a particular requirement statement to a bunch of you who are listening to this presentation, you might call it different things. Somebody might say, well, that's a, a functional requirement or a software requirement or a user requirement or a business requirement or a stakeholder requirement or a feature or a user story. We would have all sorts of different things that people would call this one requirement statement that I showed you. And so the very first thing we have to do anytime I'm having a conversation with someone about requirements is get our vocabulary straight. So I'm going to show you a three-level model that I have found very helpful 
to get my head around some of the different kinds of information that collectively represent the requirements for a project. Now, I'm not saying that this model is, is correct in an absolute sense because we don't really have any way to judge that. But it's something I've been using for a long time as a way to think about this, and I, I find it useful, and I hope you will also. Now, there's a saying about models that we should keep in mind. All models are wrong. Some models are useful, and I think that applies here. This is clearly a, a simplification, but I find it helpful. So I like to start at the top with the business requirements. Now, that's one of those words that means different things to different people, but when I talk about business requirements, I'm referring to the information that really describes why the business is undertaking the project in the first place, what benefits they hope to get or to provide to the universe as a whole if this project is completed. So how will the world be better if this product is in it? So we're looking at benefits for the customer, we're looking at benefits for the, the business that justify investing in the project. And that would be things like vision and scope and constraints and you know drawing the boundaries between what's in and what's out and understanding our business objectives and so on. And I like to collect that information in something I call the vision and scope document. If you go to processimpact.com and select the goodies button, you can access templates for these and, and other kinds of uh, deliverables that you might, you might consider creating on a software project. You might not call this a vision and scope document. You might call it a project charter or in a commercial world, you might call it a marketing requirements document. That's fine, but we need to collect the, the basic information that sets the stage for all of the other work that we do on the project. So this is important, but you can't build software from such high level information. So we need to go down to a different category of information. User requirements. So in this little diagram, the solid arrow means is stored in, and the dashed arrow means is the source of or leads to. So in this case, once we understand our business objectives, then we can start thinking about, well, what is it that users are going to do with the product? And that's what I call user requirements. And one way that we can collect those and is in the form of use cases. So that's the level of information here that we're going to be focusing on today. So this isn't just a you know, lower level decomposition of business requirements. This is actually a different kind of information. Business requirements answer the question, why are we undertaking the project? User requirements answer the question, what will the user be able to do with the product or system we're building? But that's not enough. I've talked to many, many people, literally hundreds of people over the years who have told me that, yeah, we wrote use cases and we gave them to the developers and the developers got the general idea of what we were trying to do, but there wasn't enough information and so they had a lot of questions. So we need to go down to another level of information, which is the set of functional requirements. And functional requirements are what we actually implement. So business requirements are why are we undertaking the project? User requirements describe what users will be able to do. And functional requirements describe what the developers implement. And I like to collect those in a software requirement specification. So some of these things are called documents or specifications, um, but they're really just containers for information. And you can store that information in a lot of different ways. You know, it could be traditional word processing documents, could be uh, you know, spreadsheets or index cards or a database of a requirements management tool, that's not important. They're distinct kinds of information and that's what's important. And the templates remind us of what kinds of information we need to seek when we're performing a licitation. So this alignment is very important. We need to make sure our developers get the information that lets them implement the right functionality that allows users to perform their use cases and achieve their, their desired outcomes from the system and that has to align with achieving our business objectives. Well, there's more to it than this. This is kind of the functional flow, but there's a lot of other kinds of requirements related information we need to deal with. One category are business rules. Business rules are things like corporate policies, government laws and regulations, industry standards, computational formulas, those are sorts of things. And those can certainly influence our user requirements. 